Uh, I jogged him one month. We, we tried to stand him as long as we could. We stood him a little longer. Um, jogged him one mile, turned around, galloped him about three quarters, three quarters of a mile. So he was feeling he was pretty, pretty full of himself today with a good gallop and uh, everything good. I mean, he ate up last night. He's, he's, he's got a lot of energy. He's shipped well. So I'm. Um, couldn't be happier with the horse the way he's acting and settled in, so we're, we're good there so far. <laughs> so far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you already mentioned it. Why the apostrophe? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> because the owner's over there and he spelled it wrong. He said he was a uh, third grade education. He said, I was betting horses when I was eight. I wasn't figuring out where the commas and the apostrophes go. I said, okay. <laughs> Larry, this horse has run well on uh, synthetic, slob, you know, fast dirt. Do you have any, any concerns at all in terms of the uh, surface? I don't. Uh, his, you know, he got the highest buyer number, I guess, of a three-year-old this year, 101, and it was on the poly track. So, you, you know, if I had to put a finger on it, maybe it had a little bit to do. Maybe he has an affinity for the synthetic versus the, the dirt. He's ran a bunch of good races on the dirty one here by five in the mud. So if it rains, it's not going to ruin my day anyway. It might ruin everybody else's. But uh, yeah, I think he's progressing and getting better as he gets older. And uh, hopefully he'll show that on Saturday. And breaking from the inside, uh, you've got a horse with some tactical speed, but does, it seems like he likes to come off it a little bit. Originally, I was hoping for an outside post when they pulled our pill. But then once I watched, saw where the, like the two and the six and the seven, we were going to have to eventually navigate ourselves down to get tucked in behind somebody. Now I think those horses just go, and we're, it'll be may, might work out better for us. But we don't have to worry about getting down, getting down. And it seems like all the closers are on the outside, so I highly doubt they're going to be able to cross our face coming from way out there and not having any speed. So it might work out better. And Jareth was saying that was sort of the epicenter trip last year. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would if we could emulate that. Would be great for sure. And uh, being by hard spun, seems like the distance should be an issue. I don't think so. The way, if you watch his last race, the way he galloped out after the race, it was it was actually a little bit of a shock to me as, as, as well as he galloped out after the race. And he seems to be a horse that doesn't get tired. You know, he just, after his gallop, after, after, his, after his race, I was kind of in the moment, you know, we won the race and I'm just got my hand on his shoulder. And usually horses, if you watch them, if they run a race like that, their nostrils are flaring. He was just kind of like, by the time he got back to the winter circle, he was already done being tired. You know what I mean? It was pretty cool. Yeah, it really And you can't train him. that. There's genetics, you know what I mean? Either you got it or you don't. Do you think the synthetic track, uh, you know, helped him in terms of yeah. training? I think I think he obviously it's his best race to date. Uh, so I'd be lying if I you know told you that I didn't think that it made a difference. I'm sure it made a difference. Just to what extent? Now if he keeps if he runs that race here, it's going to be super tough. Was there a point early on when you thought uh, he could be a pretty special horse? Early on, I would say well, I, I, I the, the way we we got the horses. The breeders chose me to train them because they wanted to sell them. So and I've been doing really well with young horses and we win a lot of races. So my job was to get them to win. And then once you got a winner, everybody calls you, hey, you want to sell that horse? And we were going to turn it into money. Well, I got the horse in my barn and I liked him so much that I sold him in-house to my people. So they worked out a little deal. They, they stayed in for a piece, the Sagans. And uh, the rest is history. He bought the, uh, Patricia's Hope bought the horse and uh, I wanted to keep him in house for myself, so I did like him at, 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 at a certain point. I liked him more and more as he, as I had my hands on him and got to train him and put him in company with other horses and he kept beating them and beating them and beating a good horse and working heads up with really good horses. Then I said, let's, you know, I said, I can sell you the horse now for you if you want. He said, sure. Have you been close to a derby horse in the past? I was, we ran like four or five Breeder Cups. Uh, I never really pointed towards a derby though, because just, I, I'm a, I think I'm a pretty good judge of the talent of the horses that I got. It's never, I don't want to go to a spot where I don't think I have a chance. And most of the time the horses were certain horses, individual horses, not bred to run as long as a derby and whatnot, maybe turf sprinters or sprinters in general. So this is the first one that I knew when we won the street sense, I knew we were going to be a serious contender to, to make it to the spot. Special to be here? Yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. Yep. This is it. That's what you played a game for. All right, good luck. You got it.